I am your host, Alex Jones, and we are broadcasting worldwide. What a, an amazing broadcast we have lined up for you today. Look at the global financial meltdown crisis with the stock market and derivatives that's been unfolding. We're going to have Nomi Prinz on in the third hour today, former uh, managing director at Goldman Sachs and best-selling uh, author. She is going to be joining us coming up uh, some in the third hour today. I do intend to open the phones up for first-time callers to talk about any issue you wish to discuss, from the Bundy Ranch situation to the new attacks on the Second Amendment to the missing uh, Malaysian aircraft uh, distraction, uh, clearly grabbed by a government or hijacked and crashed, and they know what happened and, and are covering it up. Uh, and then the serious issues of Ukraine developing uh, with uh, Ukrainian tanks the Russians have taken over in the eastern area, flying Russian flags, NATO troops reportedly being deployed into the area, a very serious situation on that front. And then domestically, we've got news like this. GOP fears executive order on biometric guns. Senator John Cornyn is warning that Obama administration... Uh, to not issue an executive order requiring that all new guns be made with biometric technology, such as a fingerprint recognition or bracelets that the Attorney General said last week they're looking into. Cornyn raised the issue in a letter to Attorney General Eric Holder, who in testimony earlier this month highlighted biometric bracelets and fingerprint identification as a safety issue uh, that they are uh, looking at trying to require. And uh, the great uh, der leader, Obama has said over and over again in, in the last six years, you know, I, I can't act outside the Constitution. I've got to have Congress. You know, I wish I could act. And, and then over the first few years, you know, I kind of need to act. I sure want to, but can I? Should I? To, I'll act whenever I need to do what's right for this country. So selling the idea that, come on, Obama, you'll give us all the free welfare and all the free health care and all the free chicken in every pot. You know, you know, if you just took the power and you won't take the power while he's taking the power and becoming the most dictatorial president this country has seen since Lincoln. Hands down. Hands down. FDR did some dictatorial things during World War II, but uh, those were temporary and uh, had a lot of public support. And I'm not saying public support alone authorizes someone to act dictatorially, but the point is, is that nothing that I've studied in history is anywhere near what Obama's doing. And here's the big issue. It's being done with very little fanfare until the last two weeks where Republicans like Gohmert uh, and others, Issa and even Boehner, have said we're seeing lawlessness, we're seeing above the law. Uh, the president, you know, is stonewalling. The attorney general really should probably be in jail for ignoring all these subpoenas. Anyone else would. And so finally, people are calling it what it is. And when you enter into a great tyranny, you will not be able to defeat it unless you admit it. It'd be like if you got diagnosed with uh, lung cancer, uh, the most v virulent, uh, aggressive, uh, metastasizing form, and they said, you know, you've got a 20% chance to live if we cut it out right now, uh, if it hasn't totally metastasized yet, uh, but you have no chance, 100% death, uh, if you don't cut this out of your lung. And you're like, oh, that's kind of scary. I, I don't want to admit that I've got lung cancer. That's kind of scary. I don't want to admit this has happened. It's like if you break your leg and a bone sticking out of the side of it, you know, that's happened to me, and you're sitting there looking at it, and you go, wow, my leg's really broken. It's, you know, it's really bleeding. This really hurts. I didn't say to myself, oh, no, my leg's not broken. I'm not going to be an extremist. This is an extreme act that just happened. No, no, it happened. Just like you see a car wreck and people flying out of the car dying, and then you pull over to try to help them and blood spraying everywhere out of people's necks and stuff. You know, that just happened. That was real. When I was a kid uh, visiting a pool party uh, at my dad's dental office party at his office manager's house, they had the old-fashioned plate glass windows from the 50s, 60s, whatever it was. And um, I left my water gun outside. My dad goes, come on, we're leaving. He goes, running to get your water gun. Uh, and they just closed the door, and I ran right through it. Right through it, just, just slicing down to the bone of my arm and leg, blood spraying all over the walls. You know what? That was an extreme event. It happened. 
And they didn't say, oh, uh, son, you're fine. It's a mere flesh wound. We don't need to go to the hospital. No, they put pressure on it. They got me in the car. They drove me to the hospital. They said, do we call an ambulance? No, that takes more time. They're slow. Let's go. Where's the quickest hospital? Well, this one's right here, but it's probably not as good right now. This other one's cleaner and has better staff generally. Yes, I do a lot of work there wiring jaws from car wrecks. Let's get there. You know, just they got it done. They got me to the hospital. This country is bleeding out in front of us right now. And before I get into all this news, I want to say something to Rachel Maddow and Glenn Beck and all the Democratic Party websites and a bunch of Republican Party websites, Breitbart and others that are attacking us, saying there's no Chinese deal with energy companies and that none of it exists when it's in the BLM documents, confusing people.